Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We did it, we finally filled up that Jaspies nine box Bowman Mania baseball mixer. It's a random team break, all card ship, uh, two different years, 2020 and 2022. We got, we got jumbos, we got draft first edition, draft Asia edition, draft jumbo, regular Bowman, hobby and jumbo editions, all sorts of fun stuff. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. Congrats again to the people who won their spots in the fillers. And thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up. We did say we'll give away two free spots for people who buy spots outright. So let's gather up your names here. Thanks for getting your full spots. Let's roll it, randomize it. One out of five, six times. Top two after six. Good luck. One, two, three, four, five, and six. After six times, it's David and Scott. Congrats. After six, you got extra spots going your way. So we'll mark those with the rooftop symbol so you know you won those spots. Nice. Now all 30 spots are accounted for. Let's randomize you a baseball team. Let's roll it and randomize names and teams two and a five, seven times each. One, two, three, four, five. I said seven, right? Yeah. Six and seventh and final time. We got Jonathan all the way down to Adam. Two and a five, seven times for the teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Good luck. After seven, we got the M's down to the Nats. All right, Jonathan with the Mariners, Brett with the Mets, David with the Rays, Jimmy with the Diamondbacks, Eric with my Dodgers, Brett with the Reds, Scott with the Red Sox. Charles with the A's, Matthew with the Angels, Brian with the uh, Marlins, David, Guardians and Royals, Peter, Blue Jays, Brett, Orioles and Astros, Travis with the Braves, Brett with the Yankees, Scott, Pirates, Cardinals, Rangers, Scott G with the Rockies, Evan with the Padres, Brandon with the White Sox, Andrew with the Tigers, Terry with the Twins, Chad with the Brew Crew, Brett with the Giants, Chad with the Cubs, Jimmy with the Phillies, and Adam with the Nats. Let's alphabetize by team. And trade window is open. Trades are allowed. So just to keep... Forget who was in 2020 first edition. Maybe that was... Was that the, the Jason Dominguez year, maybe? Here we got Jordan Lawler and Juan, Juan or Franco on, on these two boxes right here. That's 2022. 2020 has Gavin Lux and Boba Shett on the cover. If that rings any bells for you. 2020 draft, that's Max Meyer, Spencer Torkelson on the cover of the box. And then 2022 Bowman Draft Asia Edition, Elijah Green, Jackson Holiday. So there you have it. We're going to pause the video when we come back. We're going to see if there's any trades, and then we'll uh, we'll have the break. So stick around. BRB. All right. Welcome back, everybody. There was some trade chatter but in the, and some checking of checklists, but in the end, no deals were done here on Monday the 19th. Thanks, everyone, for watching, for breaking with us. Brett, last spot mojo. Reds, you'll be interested in these two boxes here. I think we discovered on the checklist Ellie Dela Cruz, Bowman first. So good luck to you. Good luck to everybody. A lot of great stuff in here. Appreciate you. I know this has been marinating on the site for a little bit, but I'm glad we finally got it done. I'm not sure where we're going to start. Maybe we'll start with, maybe we'll go in year order. So maybe we'll start with, yeah, we will start with this uh, 2020 Bowman Draft First Edition. Let's get this rolling first. Oh, another yeah. We got the uh, the Xfinity series race on in the background. Looking for the uh, looking for the stars of tomorrow, the NASCAR stars of tomorrow. Although AJ Allmendinger racing twice, what a beast! 
don't know how you do that. It's hard, already hard enough to do one Daytona 500. Can you imagine doing that and then just being like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll run an Xfinity race later that night too. Which I think is a little bit shorter, but still. Racing season, folks. NASCAR season. I'm a fan of it. Uh, has anyone seen... There's a little bit of red peeking out there. I don't know, what, is that 10 or 5? Um, has anyone watched the NASCAR show on Netflix? Isn't that out? Or is that coming out? It's sort of like the F1 series. I don't, I don't know if it's from the same producers. But it's supposed to be like the F1 series or the or the the golf series or whatever. I think those are golf and F1. I think are from the same producers. I think I don't know how many NASCAR fans are out there, but I think. Uh, I think the California Speedway is finally, is that on the schedule this year? I gotta double check that. I wanna say that, I gotta, I gotta do my, my homework on this, or brush up on, on this again, but I wanna say that the, the track here in Southern California was originally like an intermediate track or something like that, maybe, and then they made it smaller. And then they, I think they remodeled the whole thing. They made it, they made the, the track smaller and added more sort of amenities, more hospitality, more fan experience stuff, more like corporate suites and stuff like that. I think they're, they're reopening it soon, if not already. And then hopefully there'll be some regular NASCAR races back here, which would be cool to go to. So these, ones are not numbered so we're looking for not only first edition but first first but all card ship in this I'm trying to remember who some of the bigger prospect names were here here's Blake Rutherford to 150 130 out of 150 that'll be for Brandon and the uh, White Sox There's a Pete Crow Armstrong first first. Zach Veen is supposed to be be more than just a guy, right? Colorado will get all those Zach Veens in case I miss any. Scott Goodman with that one, and then Pete Crow Armstrong Mets edition going to Brett. Here's a Torkelson first first. And we got a Julio Rodriguez, 34 out of 50, gold. Not a first, but a nice first edition for the Mariners. That's going to be for Jonathan B. Johnny B. After kind of a rough first year, I feel like Torgelson, your former number one overall pick, started to add him on my fantasy team last year. Starting to get into it. Starting to figure things out, which is good. We'll do a bit of a recap at the end of this break as well. It's a first edition Dominguez, not a first first. There's a Nolan Gorman 16 out of 75 for the Cardinals. Yellow parallel for Scott Q. Brett Beatty, 45 out of 75 for the Mets. It's going to go to Brett. It's a 
first edition Bobby Wood Jr., not his first. There's that red coming up. Hessen Kurtzstadt for the Orioles. Brett with the O's. Supposed to be one of their big prospects right here. Yeah, second overall pick. Is he going to start playing this year maybe? He's out of high school. Sometimes those high schoolers take a little bit longer to marinate before they get to the big leagues. All right, let's see our red here. It is, it is out of five. First, first, five out of five, Christian Chamberlain, Gilo. This is your Royals. Oh, this actually goes to David, but that's Gilo's team. Can you tell us anything about Christian Chamberlain? David with the Royals? All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Out of fives and under, get the train whistle. He probably sucks, Gilo says. I hope not. Not for David's sake. I guess we'll have to, we'll have to look him up at some point. Well, last year, last year went two and four, 482 ERA, 46 games. Looks like he's more of a reliever type. 56 innings pitch, 84 strikeouts. So that's a that's a pretty good ratio. Maybe they're they're grooming him to become a to become a reliever. Jimmy mentioned Colt Keith. What team is he on? Colt Keith's supposed to be a, a good prospect as well. Maybe I can look out for some of his stuff. Yeah, Gilo's whole dilemma is with this Royals that they're either it's either their scouting or coaching is bad. Like coaching in the minor league level? Tigers. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, that is interesting. What, what is it? Is it the... That Josh Young is not first edition, but all card ship. Robert Hassel is a Bowman first. First, Robert Hassel. That's Padres edition. That's going to go to Evan. Yeah, the only prospect that panned out is Bot. You know, that's the thing with with like these baseball teams and scouting. You know, like it's up to the owner whether they want to invest in that or not. You know, so there are teams like the Dodgers or the Braves, where they build out, they put a lot of money into the scouting system. You know? And some teams don't, like the Angels. You know, there's there's like a... There's a thing that people say around baseball circles around Southern California is that here's an example of, you know, the... Here's an example of what the, the stark difference between the Angels and the Dodgers, right? The Dodgers front office staff is like twice the size of the Angels staff. So that, you know, it's not like the Dodgers just hiring random people, you know, in the, for their front office. But I think the, the idea is there's more assistance, there's more support staff, there's more analysts, there's more data people, there's more film people, you know, there's more 
you know, they more people to kind of help everybody out kind of thing. Dodgers also put a lot of money into scouting, international scouting. You know, it's also something that, that Artie Moreno's Angels, they don't invest in as well. It takes a lot of money to send scouts to, you know, to South America, to Asia. Because not only there are those scouts, and then you have the... There's also, like, fact-checking scouts. They'll, you know, they'll get the initial scouting report, and if it looks good, they'll send a different set of eyeballs to go there to follow up and all that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, that takes time. That takes money. you got to pay these scouts a salary. you got to put them in hotel rooms. you got to, you know, maybe pay for their travel, all that sort of stuff. I don't know. Is that not him on the card, Robert Hassel? There's Zach Britton to 75. Yellow parallel for the Blue Jays. That's for Peter. And we've got we've got Ronaldo Hernandez to 150 for the Rays. That'll be for David. The Royals have several top 10 picks. Got screwed in the draft lottery, though. Are they doing lotteries now? And Grayson Rodriguez, 10 out of 75 for Brett and the Orioles. Travis Swaggerty to 150 for the Buckos. That's going to be for Scott and the Pirates. Bobby Wood Jr. Pro Armstrong first, and then a blue, Colt Keith, 21 out of 150. This is what Jimmy was talking about. This is going to go to Andrew and the Tigers. It's supposed to be pretty good. Wait, how did that happen? A's and Royals were the worst, but they're picking five and six. When did that draft lottery happen? Oh, that was last year, right? That was uh, during the All-Star break is when I think when they do the draft now. Bobby Wood Jr., 75. Yeah, that wasn't a first... Was that a fir That wasn't a first Rushman, right? Because he wasn't in the Kirkstad class. But yeah, that was a base Adley Rushman, I think, somewhere in there. Yeah, there was Adley was somewhere in there. I'll save one of these Bobby Millers here. I know the, the I wish the pitchers would would sell better or would do better than their hitting counterparts on the secondary market, but but he's supposed to be a really good one. So is Clayton Beater. I think he's still a, a year or two away, but he's supposed to be really good too. And Corbin Carroll's just regular first edition. There's Michael Bush to 150. For the Dodger, that's for Eric. And yeah, there he is. Yeah, that's just first edition Adley Rushman. There's Hayden Contrell to 75, first first. There's Robert Hassel. Are you saying that's not him? Maybe it's some other guy. Anyone know that story? Zach Veen, first first. Luis Gill, gold to 50 for the Yankees. That's going to go to Brett. Uh, no, I think Clayton Beater's still with it. Dodgers. I think he's one of their top prospects. I don't think they would trade him.
Oh, he was in that Yankee deal. They brought some other prospects back. They had to clear up some roster spots. There's Ethan Hankins to 150. At O'Neill Cruz is just first edition. Landon Knack then. I think Landon Knack's another Dodger... Uh, Pitching prospect. The Dodgers eventually have to do something, right, with their prospects, because not all of them are going to have a chance to, you know, a chance to play. All right, your first edition boxes are done. Let's go, so let's stay with the 2020, and now let's go with Bowman Draft. It's Jumbo, three autographs in here. I like how they're, at least in this uh, in this Fox broadcast, it might be different when NBC gets some races, uh, but I like the way they're spotlighting the cars when like an incident happens or something like that. Luck still with the Dodgers, ceiling is still high. He wrecked his uh, his ACL running the bases last year during spring training. There's a Jordan Walker Bowman first, um, which was a shame. And then by the end of last season, these Sky Blues are not numbered, by the way. Then by last season, I think he will be. He was running the bases. So he was doing baseball activities. I think he was maybe running at full speed by the end of the year. So he's going into spring training without any restrictions, I want to say. And I think they're... Volpe, I think they're going to give him... I mean, he should be the everyday shortstop. You know, obviously provided, but he's going to be given the chance to be the everyday shortstop right from the get-go. Maybe even some third base. He's got a lot of speed. He's got, he hits really well. Defense could be a bit of an issue. Sometimes, sometimes some bad footwork or he gets a little, his hands become like stone sometimes. So there's some defensive liabilities, but he's, he can still hit the ball. He's got speed. I think he was, I think his last full year he was healthy. He might have been close to the top of the league in triples. So that's a big part of his arsenal. So hopefully he can still retain that speed. Nice. There's our first autograph. That's David Calabrese, 477 out of 499. That'll be for the Halos. It's going to be for Matthew. Yeah, he's still pretty young. And he's going to be a crucial part of like that bottom third of the Dodger lineup. I think the hope for the Dodgers, at least in my opinion. There's Logan Allen to 199, 499. You know how uh, Michael Harris hits in the bottom of that Braves lineup? But is there like a real spark plug from that bottom of the lineup? I think the Dodgers are kind of hoping for that sort of thing. There's Landon Knack, we were just talking about him. Right. 
Yeah, he. It's gonna be a. That's the hope, anyway, right? Kind of be a big time number nine hitter. To have a little little speed, little uh, kind of because if you can, you know, there'll be a lot of situations where if he can turn over that lineup, get on base as the nine hitter and turn it back over to like. What, probably Mookie, Otani, Freeman or something like that? There's C.J. Van Eck, 250 Purple Chrome for the Blue Jays. So if you can help turn over that lineup, that's going to be dangerous. Now, I guess him himself, what, what, what is the ceiling? You know, if he can get a... If you can get a few all-stars in, that'd be pretty awesome. I'm not sure if he's going to be like superstar, but the ceiling is, is still pretty high. It's a really solid player. But you never know how, how he can develop. He is still young. I think so. Mookie would lead off this year. I'm sure the Dodgers front office have all sorts of analytics that say whether Mookie should lead off first or if... Or if Shohei should. Mookie likes leading off. There's a Nick Gonzalez, class of 2020, 123 out of 250 autograph. Pirates, that's going to be for Scott. Sure, there are numbers that say. Sure, there are numbers that say how Mookie does with batters in front of him. Show hit leadoff. <laughs> that would be a way. Would that be a waste? I don't know. Try to give him as many ABs as possible with show hit leadoff. He's got a little. He's got a bit of speed too. So you might see him at second or third. But can you imagine Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman seeing a. Seeing Shohei at second or third by the time you're up to bat. The Dodger offense, I'm not worried about, at least during the regular season. I know it's not the same thing, but I know Shohei has shown some clutchness in the World Baseball Classic, so hopefully he can bring that kind of energy. In the, in the in the playoffs, which is where really the Dodgers need to need to improve. No secret, obviously, a lot of Dodger haters quick to point out that the Dodgers' quick exits. We know, but offense, I'm not worried about pitching. I'm actually a little, a little worried about this year. They might they might they'll probably have some reinforcements ready by the trade deadline. There's a Chris McMahon, Blue Wave to 150, autograph for the Rocks. That's going to be for Scott G. 37 out of 150. So Scott Q with the Pirates, got that Nick Gonzalez, and now back to back Scott, Scott G with this one here. There's a Landon Knack for Eric Houston with the Dodgers, 99 out of 150. Second round pick, puts up great numbers here. Trinan apparently is healthy. Set for opening day. He could be a back of the back of the bullpen kind of guy. Is Evan Phillips still around? I think Evan Phillips is is the official closer, but Trinan is, could be right behind him. It's Jordan Adams to 99. Angels, Matthew Shira with that. I think I just read something like a and a mailbag from the Athletic. That was just came out yesterday or today, where someone asked about who's the other pitcher, J.P. Frynesian or something like that. I think he was also another sort of good, decent, not as good as Trinan, but was a solid bullpen name that the Dodgers will finally get back. And I think Trinan's supposed to be looking good. He's throwing the hitters in spring training without restrictions. All right, here's 2020. So that was draft. Here's 2020 Bowman baseball uh, hobby. So 
So I don't know, maybe the bullpen might be actually a really good strength of the Dodgers this year. So maybe, maybe I shouldn't worry about the starting pitching this much. But I don't know. Yamamoto is in a brand new league, brand new country. So there's got to be adjustments there. Um, Tyler Glass now pitched a career number of innings last season, coming off of Tommy John, only 120 some odd innings, which is really not a lot. Walker Bueller, I don't know if he's going to make opening day roster, but he should be back within the first month of the season. But I think he'll be on an innings innings limit. And you've got young Bobby Miller who seems to improve with each start, but he's obviously still, still young. Dustin May, not until August, I think. But apparently, he's feeling great. So last year, he came off the Tommy John, and he said that, that his elbow still bothered him. Now, apparently, what he was saying, that most Tommy John recoveries in their first season back will say, yeah, the, your arm will still have, your elbow will still have some discomfort until it'll, it'll, but it'll eventually go away, that discomfort, and then you'll feel 100%. You know, there won't be like a stiffness in your elbow, but he said that never went away, and then he had to be shut down again, but I don't think he's going to be back until August. Kershaw won't be back until August. They may go six-man rotation. They might put Dustin May, there he is, speaking of Dustin May, they might put him, you know, he, he could be, he could be bullpen, Kirsch could be bullpen too. Would or maybe like short starts, maybe like four or five inning starts, three, four inning starts. Kirsch off for three innings, Dustin May for three innings, and then bullpen, you know, so they, they can, they can get pretty creative. Ethan Hankins, Atomic, not numbered. Remember Eric he's a Kino. He 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 It's like a like a firework, really shine bright for a second and then and then kinda disappeared. There's a Bowman first, Bobby Wood Jr. That's the kind of stuff we want to see. That's for David and the Royals. It's a different Dela Cruz. We won't see Ellie until these two blue boxes on the bottom. There's a Bowman first, Jason Dominguez. Nice. Get well soon, Jason Dominguez. I think he's also another player that we probably won't see. Had an elbow issue. Um, last year that required a little bit of surgery. So the Volpe and the Jason Dominguez paper will go to Brett and the Yankees. It's a couple nice bits of paper to get. Maybe we'll find some ink of theirs, which would be awesome. There's a uh, paper Bobby Witt Jr. Uh, Grant Levine to 499 for the Rocks. And Xavier Edwards. 3 out of 25, Orange Shimmer. Late first round pick for the Padres. That's going to be for Evan, Evan Pete. It's like Austin Hill is going to win this Xfinity match. And there's our autograph, Mike Abello. 447 out of 499. Brew Crew. It's going to be for Chad Coleman.
There's Gavin Lux. Get well soon, Gavin. Well, he is well. Just hopefully he keeps it up. I think back in 2020, Robert Pawson was a hot prospect, hot international prospect, but I think he's cooled off a little bit. Hasn't really shown. He's kind of struggled in the minors, but still something to hold on to, see if, see if he turns things around, turns a corner at some point. Trevor Story, 499, Rockies. Still Rockies edition there. And that'll be for Scott G. All right, uh, same year, 2020 Bowman, but jumbo edition. So we're looking for three autographs in here. Race car driver. That would be a that that'd be fun. That'd be a fun thing to do, to be. If I had the skill and the hand-eye coordination and the reaction time of these uh, of these elite drivers. Your Xfinity race. Austin Hill, congrats. Stick with the NASCAR theme on AMC Days of Thunder. There's Nicole Kidman. I think that's where they that's where they met. Was this the la the only movie aside from the movie Australia, where Nicole Kidman speaks with her natural Australian accent? I think so. I think I feel like every other movie that she's in, she's using an American accent. We got Yon Diaz, 37 out of 125 for the Rays. That's going to go to David M. There's our first of three autographs Adam Hall. That's going to be for Brett and the Orioles. Yeah, I haven't seen her in movies lately. What is she doing? Has Hollywood aged her out? You know, you're too old now. Brett with the O's. Is she doing TV, maybe? Is she on a TV show or something like that? Some... I feel, I feel like a, a lot of these... I feel like some actors sometimes disappear into like some like platform-exclusive TV show. She might be on a Paramount Plus TV show right now. She's been doing that for like the last four years or something like that. Another Bobby Wood Jr. for David M.
or sometimes they're doing like theater. You know, they'll be on they'll be on a play, in a play for like a year or two. There's another Jason Dominguez, Bowman first. There's a Volpe first and a Jorge Mateo purple paper, 179 out of 250. That'll be for Charles and the Athletics, the Oakland A's, soon to be Vegas A's. I have no idea what's going to happen there. Are they going to get the public funding to build that stadium? Or is, uh, is the owner going to spend his own money? That cheap owner is probably not going to spend his own money, right? To build his own save, even though he could probably afford to, without using public money. All right, our next autograph is going to be Philip Clark Speckle Auto, seventy-four out of two ninety-nine. That'll be for Peter and Toronto. Third and final autograph. There's Otani right there. What year is it? 2020 Otani? He's already been in the league for a bit. Um, is going to be, looks like a... It's going to be a Padre. It's Grant Little. 15 out of 150. Bowman Chrome autograph. For the Friars, that's going to be for Evan P. We got a purple chrome Matt Manning, 83 out of 250 for Andrew and the Tigers. Right, the daddies, the friars, the padres, the dads. All right, now we're moving into 2022. Let's get these uh, 2022 Bowman Draft Asia editions going. And then we'll close out with 2022 Bowman Baseball. Look, this is where we can where we can use some Jackson holidays here. Among others. I think Elijah Green is on this box too. And I'm sure once we start flipping through these cards, we'll be reminded of others that we need to look out for. Uh, the exclusives here are um, are uh, Japan, what they call Japan fractors, but it's basically the Mojo design. But since it's an Asia specific set, 
They call it Japan Fractures. Yeah, the, the boxes are pu pretty cute. They're like the little cereal boxes for some other products that we've seen. But they pack a lot of cards in here. Good luck. So now we're in 2022. It's a Kumar Rocker first. And uh, these are your Japan Fractors. And there's an autograph. Josh Kasevich, 183 out of 250, purple chrome autograph for, for Peter and the Blue Jays. And Kumar will go to Scott Q in Texas. It's not a phone first. There's Kevin Parada. And clear. There's a Clark Elliott, 148 out of 499. I'll be right here. It's going to go to Charles N. The A. You know, the Burger King commercial, apparently they're giving a million dollars to somebody who creates a new burger for them. That's just regular Ellie De La Cruz. We're going to look for his first in there. And there's an autograph right there. There's a Brooks Lee. I think he's supposed to be one of the big prospects. For the Twins, Caden Wallace for the Royals is going to go to David. William Wallace. All right, Brooks Lee, yeah, first round pick, eighth overall. It's going to go to Terry and the Twins. There's Elijah Green, Bowman first. It's for Adam and the Nats. There's Jose Salas, 104 out of 150, blue paper for the uh, fish. That's going to be for Brian. Here's a paper holiday. Holiday. That's going to be for Brett. If we took a holiday. No, uh, there's a purple 76 out of 250 Michael Kennedy for the Pirates. Scott Q. No, uh, Jackson Holiday in that exclusive, the Asia exclusive refractor, the Japan fractors. But let's move on to 2022 Bowman baseball hobby first, then jumbo. Good luck, everybody.
It's kind of crazy to watch old NASCAR on Days of Thunder to see how, like, I don't know, how different the cars are, for example, and how primitive, like, the pit boxes look. All right, Hobby Box, good luck. Got an Adiel Amador, atomic, not numbered. Here's our first Ellie Della Cruz paper. It's Brett with the Reds, last spot mojo. Hopefully, a big season for him this year. It'll be good for the hobby. There's Joshua Baez, 118 out of 150, blue Ray Wave. For the Cardinals, it's going to be for Scott Q. And then we got a Jan Contreras. Not the red autograph we wanted, but there you go, Brett. Last spot mojo. 70% of the time, last spot mojo hits 100% of the time. Jeter down to 150. And Jeter Downs was supposed to be a big prospect. Didn't quite work out. It's going to be for Scott Q and the Red Sox. In fact, he was even involved in the uh, Betts trade, the Mookie Betts trade, I want to say.
Jackson Cheerios Bowman first. Forgot about that. Paper. That's going to be for Chad. Chad Coleman with the Brew Crew. BK. So the Million Dollar Burger Contest apparently you just make your own unique Whopper using any ingredient available in the world. Here's a Dari Lorenzo, 166 out of 199 for the Astros. That's for Brett. I'm not sure. Can we? Can we all? Would we think collectively think of a million dollar burger here? We got a Magenta, Fernando Tatis Jr., 005 out of 299. Paper going to Evan and the Friars. All right, final box coming up. Good luck, everybody. Now we're looking for three autographs to close things out. Do a quick little uh, autograph recap. Along with any other uh, notable cards. This break taking a little bit longer than I thought, but we only have two orders coming in here. I don't think anything else is sold out. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, we still have it's just a little under two hours left in the show. If you want to get something else going, maybe that Mosaic Choice basketball, I would love to. Or actually, we're doing flawless after this, but after that, I mean, that's a quick break. But after that, what should we do? Maybe that random hit break from 2021 flawless? I think that's just a loose box, but. Do that. Brave slack like yeah. Let's find some brave for Travis. Ninth and final box. Good luck, everybody. Thanks for getting in. Appreciate everyone. Put work into this break. I know it took a little bit to fill, but I appreciate everyone's patience as well. All cards will ship. Looking for our final three autos in here. There's a Simon Muziotti, 243 out of 599 for the Phillies. And that will be for Jimmy and the Phillies. And we got a Brandlin Jaraba, uh, 62 out of 250. Purple chrome autograph for the Brew Crew, Chad Coleman.
Then we got a Will Wagner, 429 out of 499. Refractor for the Astros for Brett. There's another Ellie De La Cruz paper. Let's see if we can find something more significant by the end of this break. There you go, Brett and the Reds. Wow, another Brewer, same player, different parallel, 104 out of 150. Brandlin again. Chad Coleman and the Brewers. Can we get a big finish here? Let's see what we got. We got a Fran Aldui, 107 out of 125 for the Guardians. That'll be for David M. And behind Shane Boz is a High Five Futures, Noel V. Marte. I don't know why that was flipped around. Maybe it's a special, I don't know, maybe it's a little more common than I thought. And Elijah Cabell. Cabell? Bell? is our last autograph. That's gonna to go to Scott Q and the Cardinals. All right, and that brings Bowman Mania to a close. Not as maniacal as I thought it would be, but we had to try. Here's a quick little recap. Thanks everybody for getting in. Appreciate you. Got that out of five. And then a whole bunch of uh, parallels that are going to be top loaded and sorted and shipped out to you. Thanks, everybody. That was Jaspi's Nine Box Bowman Mania Baseball Mixer Random Team Break. Uh, I'm Joe for jazpyscasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next mixer. Bye-bye.